Hey guys, this is Dorian Day and welcome to Massive In-Depth number 4. Today we're going to be finishing explaining the oscillator section. We're going to be going over the modulation oscillator as well as the noise and feedback oscillators. Starting with the modulation oscillator, the manual says, The oscillator generates sine wave modulation source signals in the audible range. Its output can be used for ring, phase, and wavetable modulation of the main oscillators, as well as a modulation source for the filter, uh, filter frequency modulation effects. This oscillator is a perfect tool for sculpting aggressive sounds. The modes functions as follows from the manual. Ring modulation is a well-known technique within electronic music since the 1950s. Its name is derived from early analog circuits as the diodes were connected in a ring-like shape. Ring modulation combines two audio signals in a way such that their frequencies are interrelated, creating new frequency component components in the signal. These are called sidebands. They can be defined as the sum and difference of the various frequency components of the two source signals. Practically, practically speaking, um, ring modulating one of Massive's main oscillators usually creates bell-like metallic sounds. So let's do some examples with sine waves so you can see everything clearly. If I ring modulate a sine wave by another sine wave at equal frequencies, the result is, uh, is the sum and difference of the original frequency. And that's exactly what we see if I do this. And you can see that the RM knob is kind of like a dry wet. As we go full either direction, we either have the original signal or the full sidebanded ring modulated signal. In the center, we have both. So if you look at the pitch, you can see that the original note was at C1, 67 hertz, and the second is at C2, 132 hertz. Now, this is one octave above the frequency. So um, if you think about what's going on, you have C, C1, you add it to itself, and you get C2. And then if you subtract it from itself, you get C nothing. It goes to zero hertz, and it's all the way. It's, it's not being displayed right now, but as soon as I change the pitch, you can see it come in. There's the second sideband. So if you also look here, you notice that as I turn the pitch up, the upper frequency moves upwards, and the lower frequency moves upwards. But if I go down, the upper frequency moves downwards, and the lower frequency moves upwards. So what's going on? Well, in reality, both, uh, both peaks are moving in the same direction. But when a frequency reaches zero hertz and goes into the negative hertz range, it's reflected back into the audio spectrum, resulting in a uh, rising lower frequency, re re rising lower frequency regardless of pitch direction. So let's choose some interesting pitch uh, values to test. If we go up an octave, we notice that we have. G, um, an octave, and yeah, an octave above. So that's an octave and a perfect fifth, and the original. And if you notice, the original uh, signal is diminished in strength. So why does the original signal diminish in strength as we turn the uh, ring modulation knob? Well. If you um, so before in the last one, when we subtracted the frequency from itself, it was at zero hertz. It didn't exist. If we subtract itself from itself again, we get negative whatever this frequency is, which is sixty-seven hertz. Uh, but like I said, um, the the peaks are reflected backwards or back into the audio spectrum. So you end up having a peak exactly where your original source is. Um, however, it's, um, it's, its phase is shifted 100 degrees out of phase. Uh, I don't know exactly how this works, but that's how, um, what I've read. So it um, cancels out the original frequency. However, since the RM is kind of like a dry wet between the two, it's, uh, you don't get full cancellation, but you sort of shift between the two 
um, and they cancel each other out a little bit in the middle. Uh, if we turn the pitch to 19, we notice we have uh, three octave peaks. We have C1, C2, and C3. If we go to 24, We get a G2 and an E2. That's a uh, perfect fifth, an octave above, and a major third, two octaves above. So, so far all of these peaks have been harmonics of the original uh, signal. Um, however, if we go up to 36, we get an A sharp three. And that's our first inharmonic tone uh, because A sharp is not an integer multiple of our original frequency. So, um, in pretty much any, most of the other non musical um, intervals create dissonance. So that's why they say they're good for bells or metallic tones because they tend to be um, have inner harmonic qualities. Uh, also, since ring modulation is essentially amplitude modulation, you can use ring modulation uh, with low pitches to create a tremolo effect like this. So if I turn my pitch all the way down and turn ring modulation up on oscillator one, you hear the uh, volume start to wobble. And it pitch tracks as you play higher notes, it uh, tremolos quicker. Its uh, range is kind of limited because this doesn't go down far enough to be a uh, really true tremolo, but it's still pretty cool. Um, I've used it on a number of patches that I'll eventually go over. Next we have phase modulation. Um, from the manual again, the phase modulation implemented in Massive is sonically equivalent to the familiar frequency modulation or FM synthesis, uh, synthesis technique. The modulation oscillator acts as the modulator while the main oscillator becomes the carrier. You can use the phase modulation capacities of Massive to create classic bass sounds. Um, and then it just says other stuff, okay. Phase modulation is essentially uh, ring modulation with feedback. Um, that's probably not the best explanation of it, but you can act, you can do it. I'm gonna I want to show you, but PM and FM are are equivalent under most conditions, but you can also see how it's a um, an operation of feedback on ring modulation. So let's do phase and look at the spectrum. And remember, these are all sine waves, so it's a sine wave modulating a sine wave. So we have C and then a C an octave above and then a perfect fifth, fifth an octave above. So this is a sine wave pattern. As you increase um, the phase, you get more of the sine harmonics coming in. That makes it more of a square. So. Uh, so how to uh, show that the phase and ring modulation are, are are similar, but just with feedback. I'll bring in another massive. So make sure this is my new one. Okay, this is my new massive. All right, change to a sine wave. Turn on ring modulation. And turn on feedback.
And this is why that definition is not exactly correct, because it's not as controllable, but you get the same effect, which is pretty neat. So, yeah, that can be used for FM sounds, and it's also really powerful. This whole modulation section is that plus the distortions and the filters are what makes Massive Massive, way more than even the sounds inside of here because in my opinion they pretty much all they start to sound just the same after a while next we have a uh, position modulation uh, you can hear this if I slow it down a lot and act on one You can see it uh, comes in as a, into a square. It oscillates between the two. If I go to a modern talking, it's really easy to hear. It's literally just beating, uh, moving the wavetable position knob at you know whatever rate this pitch is set at. And it creates a um, entirely different kind of modulation. That's I don't, I'm not exactly sure how it's re related to FM or any of those. And then we have filter modulation. You can hear it moving there now easily. But it ha um, at high speeds it creates distortion. Like, okay, so here's a sine wave. I turn on this, and all of a sudden a high end comes in, and it's... Oh, sorry, it was... Ah, okay. There. That's just from the filter moving. To get more harmonics. So it can create crazy sounds. Um, next we have the noise oscillator. Uh, there's a menu to select the kind of noise that you'd like. An amp to control volume, uh, a pitch knob to change the pitch of the noise, and then we have the filter slider right here to uh, choose which filter the no uh, sound goes to. Then finally we have the feedback knob. The feedback knob grabs audio from various points in the audio chain and feeds it back into the beginning, reinforcing the original tone, but becomes distorted and chaotic very quickly. So let's hear. Uh, it can even distort a sine wave pretty crazily. Um, so, and if you look on the routing page, you can choose your feedback source. You can get it from after the first filter, after the second, um, before the amp, after the amp. And you can also add inserts on the feedback line if you wish. And we'll talk about that when we go over inserts. Uh, you can do this cool trick where you can make an oscillator out of noise with the feedback. You just give a slight bit of, bit of noise. Let's see. 
So you hear the noise. So even once you turn the uh, noise down, you can still use the audio. It basically creates a sign or a saw wave. Actually, it might be a square. I'm not exactly sure. It's uh, kind of hard to find, see the harmonics clearly. But it's a pretty gritty tone, and you can use it for like ramps and stuff. You can sort of do something like this. You just give a tiny bit of noise. Uh, and that's enough for the feedback to grab onto. Uh, and you can do like a laser. You can use it to do some cool things um, like this. Uh, it's it's mostly better with the audio going. It's not so useful to just make feedback oscillators. Um, Anyways, that wraps up Massive In-Depth number four. Thanks.